Hi, hello, welcome to today's video. My name is Monzi. If you are new here today, I'm going to be talking to you about the six books that I read in the month of June. I did also DNF one book, so I'll be talking about that. And I say we just get into it. So I started off the month on a really high note. I read Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. This was my first book by Abby Jimenez that I have read, and I absolutely loved it. So we're following our two characters, Alexis and Daniel. They have a chance encounter on the side of the road and it kind of progresses into a little bit of a friends with benefits type of situation. And obviously it turns into more than that. The thing is that these two people come from very different worlds and so they have a lot to overcome in order to be together. There is an age gap that's notable. They live two hours away from each other and they're of very different socioeconomic statuses and all three of those things come into play multiple times throughout the book. There is a third act conflict, but what I love about it is that it is not based in any type of miscommunication. In fact, I feel like the characters were very, very communicative with one another about how they were feeling and where they were at. So their conflict actually stems from the fact that they just have a lot of differences to contend with. And the book is basically just 300 pages of them figuring it all out, figuring out how they can be together. Daniel is hands down one of my new favorite male main characters that I've ever read in a romance. I just loved him. I thought he was so sweet, so skilled, so tender-hearted, so kind, so warm. There were just a million and one things to love about this man. And you actually get his perspective in the book. It's not just the female main character's perspective, it's dual perspective. And I really, really like that in books. I like getting to hear both characters share what they're feeling and not just getting one side of things. I do want to say that there is some discussion about abuse in the book, both emotional and physical, which I wasn't quite expecting and it makes it a bit of a heavier read, but I prefer that in my romance books. I like when there's something outside of the romance that we can discuss and have conversation about and abuse was kind of what it was in this book. So overall, really, really enjoyed this one. Gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars and highly recommend. The hype is real. The next book that I read is The Glass Castle by Jeanette Walls. This is a reread for me. It was my first reread of the year. I both listened to it on audiobook and also read it on my Kindle. The opening scene in this book immediately pulls you in. It starts off with Jeanette as an adult woman. She is living in New York and she's sitting in a taxi, looks out the window and sees her homeless mother rooting through a dumpster. And then the book rewinds all the way back to when Jeanette is three years old and we go from there in chronological order up until present day. So this is about Jeanette's upbringing in a somewhat nomadic family that lives in poverty somewhat by choice and also just due to the really poor decision making on her parents' part. And it's just about how Jeanette and her siblings were able to make their way in the world despite growing up in this really dysfunctional family. Just to give you a little bit of a snippet of what her parents were like, there's a couple of moments in the book where Jeanette's mom says things like, it's not my responsibility to feed you, or why do I have to be the one to get a job? And she's saying this to her children, to her like young, impressionable, children. Just seems to have like no concept of what it means to be a parent. So as you can tell, there's a lot of negligence in this book and it's really infuriating, but it's also really shocking. Like my jaw dropped multiple times. I don't feel like you can read this book without feeling shook to your core. And it's just a really, really fascinating read and really, really well done in my opinion. Does this book have the same hold on me that it once did? Probably not, but I would still highly, highly recommend. I like to compare this book to Educated by Tara Westover, another memoir with similar themes. If you have read that and you liked that book, then I'm pretty sure that you will like 
the glass castle. Next, I picked up The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. I did a whole reading vlog on this if you want to go and watch that. But overall, I found this book to be just meh. Had a really interesting premise. It's about our main character, whose name I already forgot. It's about our main character, Nora, who is going through some depression. She is regretting some of the choices that she's made in her life, and she is just not happy to be alive. And she finds herself with the opportunity to enter the Midnight Library, where she's able to pull books off of a shelf and live different lives had she made different decisions in her past. The bulk of the book is just her cycling through these different alternate lives and coming to the conclusion that no matter what choices she had made in her past, she was always going to have an imperfect life. Great message. I appreciated the point that the author was trying to get across. I just found that the book was a little repetitive. After her going through a few lives, I was kind of over it and I just wanted to get to the end. But I will say that the writing is really nice and it's really simple and really easy to get through. Most of the chapters are only a couple of pages and the book is less than 300 pages. So it's a really quick read and a lot of people love this book. So I don't want to steer you away from reading it. I would just give it a shot yourself and see how you feel. The next book that I picked up and DNF'd is The Celebrants by Stephen Rowley. This is about a group of friends who reunite every few years when one of them is going through a hard time and they throw that friend like a living funeral to celebrate their life and kind of lift their spirits while they're going through a tough time. I thought I was really gonna like this. I liked the concept of it but the writing felt all over the place. I just couldn't seem to follow the dialogue and figure out who was saying what, and that was really frustrating for me. And also the banter between the friends was just bad. Like it really felt like the friends in this book didn't even like each other. So I got about 40 pages through this book and I just could not push through, which is saying a lot because I rarely DNF books. This is my first DNF of the year. It's just not something that I do. That's how much I didn't jive with this one. I do still want to read Stephen Rowley's The Gungle because I've heard excellent things about that one and I like the concept of it. So I'm not opposed to reading another book by Stephen Rowley. This one just wasn't for me. And then for the rest of the month, I exclusively read Romance, starting with Say You'll Be Mine by Naina Kumar. This is an Indian American romance, and that's why I wanted to read it. I thought it would be fun to read about a book that felt familiar to me. So in this book, we have Meghna and Karthik, and they have been set up by their parents. It's not necessarily an arranged marriage trope, more of like an arranged meeting. So in the Indian community, it's pretty common to do this. Uh, parents will pass around something called bio data, which is like your resume. You can also think of it as your Tinder profile, and it gets passed around among the aunties and uncles and you know if they find someone that's a good match for their child then they'll try to set something up and that's what happens in this book so Karthik and Meghna are set up and they actually kind of hit it off but Karthik is really opposed to actually getting married he's just doing this to appease his mom whereas Meghna actually did want to give it a shot and did want to see if she could meet someone in this type of way they end up faking an engagement for different reasons and the plot kind of progresses from there. This is very much like your standard rom-com, light, fluffy read. It just had a lot of familiar elements to me that I enjoyed reading about. So I ended up giving this a 3.75. It was really fun. Next up, I read Daisy Hates, the second book in the Magnolia Parks universe. This book was very different, in my opinion, than the Magnolia Parks book. It was much heavier. There were higher stakes. There was a lot of violence in the book, whereas Magnolia Parks is, it's not a light read. It's still really toxic, but it's more about like Magnolia's interest in fashion and just like her lavish lifestyle. It's not as dark, but this book was pretty 
pretty intense. So we have three perspectives that we're following. We're following Daisy and we're following her brother Julian who is a gang lord and one of the most notorious gang lords in the UK. And then you get Christian who is Daisy's love interest. Because Julian is a gang lord, Daisy is often a target um, of Julian's enemies because he's very protective of her. So she's often just under watch by bodyguards, by her brother, by her brother's friends, because they're all trying to ensure that nothing happens to her. So there's a lot about crime and gang activity in this book on one hand, and then on the other hand you have Christian and Daisy who have this budding romance and you're following that relationship and seeing how they're feeling about each other and whatnot at the same time as all of this violent activity is going on. And I liked it. I did. It's weird. It's different. But I think I'm just really drawn to Jessa Hastings' writing. I really, really like her prose. It's very unique, very different than anything I've ever read. I'd probably give this book like a 3.75 to 4 stars, somewhere in that area. And I'm definitely gonna keep on with the series. I'm, I'm having a good time with it. Definitely not a light, fluffy romance, though, if that's what you're looking for. It's toxic. It is toxic. Okay, and then the last book that I read is You Again by Kate Goldbeck. This is a book that I felt lukewarm about. I could rate it anywhere from a 3 to a 3.75 just on any given day depending on my mood. You know what I mean? Like, it fluctuates my feelings on the book. This is supposed to be a retelling of When Harry Met Sally, which I still haven't watched, but I think I'm gonna watch it this weekend. So it's an enemies to friends to lovers story. We're following Ari and Josh. They meet randomly through these various chance encounters, and at the start, they really don't like each other. And then they start to develop a friendship over time. That part of the story, the enemies to friends part, I wasn't that interested in. I didn't really enjoy reading about how much they disliked each other. But once they became friends, and as they were moving on into more than friends territory, that's when I started to feel a little bit more invested in the story. But it was really hard for me to understand how I was feeling about the book the whole time that I was reading it because I didn't like either of the characters. They were not only unlikable, because I like that, I like flawed characters, but these two were irritating. I just I didn't connect with either one of them. I would say by the end of the book I connected a little bit more with Josh, but I never could connect with Ari. But despite the fact that I didn't really enjoy either of the characters' personalities, it was kind of the plot that got me through to the end of the book. Oh, and I just want to quickly mention Josh is a chef, so there is a good amount of food descriptions in the book, which is always going to slightly elevate my rating of something that I read because I just love reading about food. So as a side note, if you have any books that you've read that kind of center around food, please let me know because I will 100% read them if I haven't already. And those are the books that I read in the month of June. I did read a lot of romance, which is kind of what I'm planning on doing for the next couple of months as well. So you can be expecting a lot more love in my future wrap-ups. Let me know down below what your favorite book of June was. I always love to know what everyone else is reading. I'm gonna go now. Thank you so much for being here. I will see you in the next video.